What's up guys, today we revive Show Me Your Rig. Now, Show Me Your Rig was a series that I did on the channel earlier in 2017. We did four episodes initially. They were pretty well received, but just because of some time constraints, a lot of projects and reviews that have come up, I haven't had a chance to do another episode. But I've recently done a couple of live streams where people have actually asked me every time, hey, can you bring back Show Me Your Rig? So I think that people want this kind of content. So we're gonna go ahead and make episode number five right now. Now, for those of you who may be new to the channel or perhaps just unfamiliar with Show Me Your Rig, what this series is, is a way for me to give back to you guys by showcasing some of the builds that you guys do that don't necessarily get the chance to shine. Just like me, I know that you guys are putting your heart and soul and time and effort and money into building these systems and sometimes they just kind of sit in your room and nobody gets a chance to appreciate them for what they are. So what I try to do here is shine a spotlight on these systems. Show them to you guys, the community, maybe you guys would get some ideas for what you might wanna do with your next build. I do comment on things that I specifically like or maybe some things that could be improved. But overall, this is more of a program for you guys, the community, uh, to kind of see what everybody else is doing. Now, historically, there have been no prizes on Show Me Your Rig. This is more a showcase for you guys than it is a competition. But what I'm gonna do to encourage more people to participate is I am going to offer a prize, but it's only gonna be every 10th episode. So what I'll do is every 10th episode, I'll go back through the previous nine episodes, choose three systems that I feel are the most worthy and put them up for a vote to you, the community, to choose who's going to win the prize. Now, the prize is going to be a $100 gift card to Amazon, not a huge prize because that's not what I want this series to be about. I want it still to be about showcasing your guys' hard work, not necessarily chasing this 100 bucks. Still, if it gives you guys some incentive to take some artsy shots of your new system and send them in to me so that I could feature them on the channel, it's kind of a win-win for everybody. You might win $100, I get some good systems to feature, and the audience gets to see your hard work. So how do you enter? Well, just the same as always. I have an email address, which is right here, showmeyourrig at gmail.com. This is how you send me any and all information you might want me to take a look at and consider. Send me in some high quality photos of your system, along with any information that you might want me to talk about on the show. This can include stuff about you, your social media, the system specs, what you use it for, or anything else that might be relevant. I'm gonna try to do this once a month. So yes, the prize being given out is not going to be very often. However, like I said, at least it's still a little something. With that being said though, I haven't done one of these shows in quite a while, but I still remember how to do it. So let's get to Show Me Your Rig, episode five. All right, so let's just jump into it. This first one is from Kellen. Kellen is a longtime viewer of the channel and he writes, Hey Brian, my name is Kellen. I work in IT at the Windows administration level. I, build my, I built my PC originally when X99 came out with a 5820K. I was still in school and ran a lot of VMs. I upgraded to a 5960X when the Strix board came out and a 1080, but that has since been swapped out to a 1080 Ti. I do some light video editing for people, but still for the most part play games on an ultra wide 3440 by 1440 monitor when life allows. This is my second attempt at hardline tubing, so be gentle. Uh, we'll try. All right, so we got an i7-5960X at 4.7 gigahertz. Corsair Dominator Platinum Limited Edition Blackout, 32 gigs. That's two by 16 gigs. So he's only running dual channel. Uh, and he wrote me something here. I know I'm only running dual channel. Um, but I think he said he's uh, he's looking forward to maybe upgrading to Coffee Lake. And I guess he didn't want to buy more than two dims. Um, but you should always be looking to take advantage of the quad channel configurations when you're running an enthusiast platform. Uh, EVGA 1080 Ti Founders Edition, Asus X99 Strix motherboard, uh, a whole bunch of storage, uh, EVGA 1050 Gold PSU, Cable Mod Cable Kit, and then his water cooling parts are from EK, XSPC, and AlphaCool. Uh, the case is a Corsair 750D. So, right off the bat here, we could see that 
this, the Corsair 750D is an absolutely enormous case. And you can see that because this is a full size ATX motherboard and it is just look, it looks like a micro ATX board in a regular ATX chassis. But if you look over here, what will clue you into the size of the case is the number of expansion slots. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whereas a normal case only has seven. So one of the problems that that causes is actually that your cables have a much longer route and are far and are exposed far more than they otherwise would be in a regular so regular sized case. So, you know, we see uh, instances of like cables running here, like this cable here. Uh, this is the audio cable runs all the way across. And then up here we have a little, uh, we'll talk about this more in a second, but these cables are more exposed than they normally would be, especially with a radiator and fans already mounted. A lot of times radiator and fans will cover up this section and you won't even have to worry about if you have mismatched coloring. Uh, but oh, like over here, like the, the cable cutouts, the grommets, these are placed for an EATX board. So then you find yourself in a position where these cables are having to make extra long runs. And then like the USB three header is, you know, is running longer than it normally would be. Um, and, and that just kind of holds true throughout this entire build. It, it seems like you have a lot of exposed extra wiring. Something else that I wanted to talk about was the, uh, was the, the different colored cables. It looks like they're all associated with your, uh, with your pump and water cooling system. So one thing to consider when you're putting this much time and effort into a build is why, why skimp out on things that are fairly easily resolved. And one of those things is uh, these, the coloring of these cables that are, that are clearly visible in the case. So consider instead of leaving them exposed like this, throwing some sleeving over them. You could buy a very cheap black sleeving kit. Uh, you could even, even if it's just so much as to put, um, you know, heat shrink on there, put some sleeving across the whole thing. Uh, you don't even have to individually sleeve them. And just to make it a black look, as opposed to having exposed green and I guess green and blue wires uh, on your otherwise black and orange system, it just makes things a whole lot cleaner. Uh, let me go to a different picture here. Another thing to consider is that uh, these drain ports down here you can actually put it a put an adapter onto this Y splitter and just put the ball valve directly onto the splitter. And then when you need to attach a piece of tubing afterwards. Uh, I had a system, a deep red actually had this same similar system, same similar drain system where um, I had a piece of tubing that was just uninstalled on there all the time. But the reason I had it that way is because it was facing backwards and getting to it was just impossible. So I, I routed the tubing so I could access it through the through the back of the case. Uh, but here you have clearly have a lot of access to it in the front. I would just put the ball valve directly onto that splitter. Uh, and that way you won't have to worry about having this piece of tubing that's just lying down there uh, looking like a dead snake or something like that. So as far as the bends go, let's see, here we go. So I, I don't, I'm not going to fault anybody specifically for how they chose to run their tubing. Like I would, this is not a bend that I would make, but it's done well. Like the, it looks like the tubing, like the bend itself is actually pretty clean. I don't see any kinks or anything like that on it. Um, there's a little bit of a flat spot, but I mean, it's really, it seems like it's well done. Um, and as far as like your other bends, your other bends also look good, but just something else to keep in mind. You don't need to make bends for the sake of making bends. Uh, sometimes cleaner is better. And I understand that probably the reason that you did this is because there's a height mismatch. So if you take a look at this and you see the tube running across versus where it has to go into the CPU block, there's a little bit of a height difference, but you can solve those problems without resorting to big loop-de-loo uh, tubing bends. Uh, you know, I understand you probably wanted to do this for a little bit of flair, um, but does it match the rest of the aesthetic of your system is what you have to think about. So if we go back to this, you know, uh, while these aren't perfect, they're, they're pretty good. Like the, this, this lines up with this, this is parallel here. These two, you have otherwise horizontal, horizontal. This one back here is horizontal. Um, this tube back here, the one that's going down into the top of the reservoir, um, could be centered a little bit better, but still we're looking at like horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical, diagonal, parallel, diagonal. And then you have uh, like a loop-de-loop. And 
I try to keep symmetry within my loop when I'm building it. So if I, if everything has a loop-de-loop, -loop, that's fine. Or if everything is parallel vertically or diagonally, that's fine. But when you start mixing them, it starts to look a little a little off. Like maybe you didn't maybe you didn't take continuity in, into consideration. So overall, what I would say here is, you know, I, I think maybe finding a different route for for these cables might be good. Um, tucking some of this extra cabling away, like you have this this wire running here. I guess this is. Is this like for maybe this is for an LED or something like that um, but you have like these cables down here uh, underneath the SSD that are kind of exposed I understand that they're behind the motherboard tray but you can still see them uh, you have these uh, you know the front panel audio cables and these the front IO that can go into a grommet as opposed to running all the way across just tidying everything up disregarding the personal preference as far as how this loop looks um, just tidying up the cabling in here, I think, would go a, a real long way. Uh, I mean, everything else in here looks pretty good. I, I might also consider throwing an exhaust fan on the back if you have the room. It looks like looks like you probably do. Um, but everything else in here is, is set up pretty well. Like it's a, it seems like a beastly system, a 5960X and a uh, and a 1080 Ti. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way your system is going to perform. It's just, you know, you have a couple of mismatched colors here. You got this Corsair Force LE SSD that's yellow. Uh, you have this red sand disc. Maybe consider removing those uh, those stickers. Um, but black and orange is a great scheme, great color scheme. And you got a really good start here. Just seems like if you're going to put the time in to do this kind of a build, put the time in, you know, put the extra hour or two to make sure the little details are right. So as a little bit of a change from how we used to do it, I'm not going to score these systems anymore. Uh, that kind of goes along with how we're going to make this into a, a little bit of a, a contest later on. So I'm going to let you guys decide how these systems compare to each other. So I'm not going to score them. Um, but feel free to um, to let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought of each system, what maybe can be improved, or what you really liked about what they did. Because that's kind of the whole point here. Oh, I just noticed you have some mismatch fittings. I don't know why I didn't notice that before. Uh, I tend to like continuity in my fittings as well. So maybe if you're thinking about doing a rebuild, maybe match these fittings up. If not, then don't worry about it. They're both black. Okay, next up we have Kian or Kyan. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. K-I-A-N uh, S. Uh, okay, so I got this from actually the moderator or one of the moderators for my live streams. Uh, he goes by Ready Player One online. Uh, and he sent this to me. This is his son's build. So he writes, uh, this is my son's PC that he actually built and we just upgraded to an open loop today. Uh, the chip he currently has isn't overclockable, but when Nvidia drops a new GPU, he'll get my GTX 1080 and his sister, the GTX 970 here are his system specs. Okay, so we got an Intel Core i7-4770, Gigabyte Z97X Gaming 7, uh, EKWBL240 kit with added white fittings and PETG tubing, Corsair Vengeance 16 gig DDR3-1600, an EVGA GTX 970SC with a homemade backplate, uh, EVGA Supernova 750G1, uh, A40 Evo, up here, sleeved cable extension, UPHER, I've never heard of them, up here, sleeved cable extensions, uh, and a Fantex P400 case, uh, with some Corsair fans and a Fantex RGB LED kit. Uh, okay, so the back plate is basically his name, uh, his, his initials, and then a number one. And he says, thanks for bringing the show back. You are welcome. So let's take a look at this PC. This looks pretty clean. This looks this looks really good, for especially for, uh, for a first build. Uh, custom Hardline Loop. I, I'm sure you helped him out with this a little bit, but this looks, this looks really good. Uh, just the things that stand out to me initially are uh, cable management looks excellent with the with the small exception of these cables down here. Uh, what I did when I built in a Fantex case <clears throat> was I utilized these cutouts that are meant for like drive mounting and I actually cut a little notch in the corner and I routed um, any cables that needed to go back through from my pump. Uh, back through the case this way and then out any appropriate grommets as necessary. Uh, it looks like you got uh, the pump wiring 
and some fans running across here. So these actually might be your front panel fans, which you can definitely route out and back and then back around so you don't have these coming across. It's not overly obvious because they are black and they're running behind the pump, but it's just something to think about. But just taking a really, taking an overview of this case, that everything in here looks really clean. Uh, like I said, I hadn't heard of these cables before, but they look really good, nice and thick. Uh, you got appropriately routed cabling uh, running through the right cutouts. Uh, I like how everything is kind of tucked neat and tidy down here. Let's see some other pictures. Uh, this is the custom made backplate with his initials and the number one. Uh, this is pretty cool. I guess you made this probably out of acrylic. Uh, <clears throat> one thing to, to consider uh, is that I like to, when I have a Wi-Fi card, I put it underneath the GPU so that it's not, you don't see this big splotch of green right in the middle of your system. It kind of tucks it away. You don't really even see it because it's so short. Uh, put, it, put it down below the GPU instead of having it up top. Uh, another thing that I do is I never, never, never use these fan headers now you've done a, an excellent job of hiding it like i don't you don't see it except for right here but um the, what i do is i usually take my cables and i route them up and uh, up and around and then down back through here to a header over here or a header up here uh, i never use this header just because i want to avoid as many cables in the middle of the board as possible um, and if you remove this and put it down here this cable might even be more exposed so that's something to consider. That's just a very easy fix. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got a setup picture. Looks like a looks like a basket of marshmallows. Uh, <laughs> this looks pretty cool, uh, especially for our, for our kid, uh, 14 years old or whatever he is. This looks great, uh, really nice and neat. I hope he keeps it this way. I don't know if he had to clean this up specifically for this shoot, but this looks really good. Uh, th just commenting on the tubing here. I know this is probably the first hardline build that he has done. Uh, but the, the tubing looks looks like a little kinked over here. So uh, if at some point you're going to rebuild the system, take your time. Try to redo these bends. Uh, make them a little smoother because they do they do look a little flat and a little kinked. Uh, but I'm sure they're flowing just fine. Uh, same thing with this. Uh, this The bend into the CPU right here looks a little kinked. But maybe that's just the angle. Let me see if I get a better shot of that. No, not really. Uh, yeah, so just just consider maybe redoing this tube, I think. And so I like how you have this this port down here. This might be a problem though, because I assume this is your fill and drain port. As soon as you open this valve, as soon as you open this fitting right here, um, fluid's just gonna come pouring out. Um, that should have a ball valve connected to it so that you can control that. Uh, so I hope when you go to empty this, it's not, uh, it's not a huge mess. <clears throat> Other than that, you know, just talking about like the colors, I don't mind the blend of colors. Like a lot of people might say, you know, you have a bunch of different colors going on here, but I like, so gray is neutral. Black is neutral. I don't count those against you or against you, against your color count. Um, the blue here matches the blue on the, on the GPU and the blue on your back plate. So this is all very nice. And then the red is it's almost kind of like an accent color and I, I don't see it as conflicting or contrasting at all. I actually see it as a nice little pop in this corner. I, I actually really like the way this looks uh, as opposed to a lot of systems that have you know multiple colors going on where I kind of say, eh, maybe, maybe pick a color and stick with it. I like the way this turned out. I like the way you have this pump mounted. This is a really good spot for it. It makes the, the runs in here really nice and clean. Um, this strip here, uh, I would just, this isn't a big deal. This is probably covered up when your case, when the case is closed, but try to flatten this out. Uh, you might get some, a little bit of uneven lighting if you have this bulge like this. Uh, maybe pull this a little more taut up top or, or pull it down a little bit further. Just try to make it, just clean that up. Uh, but this is a really nice looking system uh, for, you know, with a GTX 970, I'm sure that, um, you know, I'm sure you're doing okay in 1080p games, but when, you know, when you get a nicer GPU, obviously you'll do a little better. Um, one thing to, to consider though, uh, I, I'm sure you did this more for aesthetics than anything else, but as a, with a non overclockable chip, water cooling loses a lot of its value because these aren't going to run any faster. You're not, I mean, you can't overclock them and it's not like without being overclocked, they're, they're getting anywhere near any kind of thermal limits. So 
water cooling, the benefits of water cooling are purely aesthetic at this point, and this looks really nice. But just keep that in mind for the future that, you know, it might be worth it to to invest the money that you spent in this kit and, and the, the extra money on the fittings and whatnot into a, a better processor or a different platform or something along those lines. But that said, you can use this kit when you upgrade and this block will fit on whatever you upgrade to next. So you're probably good to go. Nice job. Really well done. All right. And our last system here is from Weston B. Weston writes, hello, my name is Weston B. And this is my first custom loop. It has been a multi-month project that I finally completed recently. Due to some unforeseen circumstances, I was unable to water cool the GPU at the time, although I will be doing that in a couple months with an ASUS 1080 Ti. I built this PC as a fun project and wanted to put out all, pull out all the stops. My goal was to do hardline tubing, custom cables, and case modding slash painting. I was able to accomplish these goals minus the GPU. Uh, I'm a 3D generalist who does modeling and rendering, among, among other things. I don't do much gaming, but the option is nice to have. The split chamber design of the Lian Li PC09 was the main factor in picking that chassis as I can hide all my drives and the PSU. That is a nice thing to have. I painted the brushed aluminum trim of the case as well as the trim of the Corsair fans. So he's running an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X at 4 gigahertz at 1.45625 volts. That's a lot of voltage for that processor. Uh, but he says it hasn't gone above 61C. Okay. Uh, he's running an Asus X370 Crosshair 6 Hero. 4x8 uh, gig kit of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3000. An EVJ 1050 Ti. An interesting choice for this setup. Uh, Corsair HX750i with custom sleep cables. Uh, so uh, let's see, Corsair HD 120 fans, Corsair ML 120 fans, uh, OCZ SSD, a PNY SSD, th uh, three Toshiba three terabyte hard drives in RAID zero, and a Western Digital Red two terabyte. That is a huge amount of storage. Uh, so water cooling parts are from EK, Singularity, Primo Chill, and Alpha Cool and Barrow. There's a lot of different stuff. All right, let's take a look. So we have right off the bat a very clean looking system. But this I know you said you're upgrading this. This is my primary problem with this system. And it jumps out to me before we even really get into it. Now I know you said you're upgrading the GPU soon, but this is a system, this is a very high-end system with a, in a very expensive loop a lot of custom parts, custom painting, expensive fans, your own sleeving, and there's a 1050 Ti in it. Again, we kind of run into this problem where are you allocating your funds properly? I would much rather get the system up and running the way you want it to run and then worry about water cooling. It seems to be people are, people are doing it in reverse because they want it to look nice, whereas if you did it the other way, it would perform well first and always, and then make it run a little cooler, look a little nicer. With that being said though, uh, this does look really clean. Uh, this tube right here, um, so it looks like you kinda, looks like you kinda went out this way and then went back this way with the tube. I don't know why this isn't just straight up and down. It looks a little crooked, uh, but, uh, you know, this, I like the way, like all the water cooling that runs are, con are contained to like the exterior, like the perimeter. And then you can see right through and uh, and no tubing gets in the way, which is a, a, a some people like tubing everywhere. Some people like looking really clean. This does look really good. Uh, you did your own sleeving. Oh, see here we have a, another, this is the front of the case. And this this looks really good. You said you custom painted this. I really like the way this looks. But this is this is a little crooked here. This bend could have been uh, a little sharper and then we would have had the right, um, the right angle. So this looks a little bit off, a little bit, but we're nitpicking at this point. Um, let's see if we can get some different pictures. So this is your own sleeving. And you took an interesting approach here in doing all the sleeves in one, all the cables in one giant sleeve. Um, this is personal preference. So if you love this, this is the way you wanted it, then good for you. Uh, you did a good job in sleeving it yourself. Most people don't even try. Um, I personally do like the individually sleeved look a little bit better. You also have this coming out here. I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that a fan cable? Maybe. Um, but this looks you could tuck that in i think tuck that in and get rid of that that would look a little bit better um while you're doing the sleeving why not sleeve up 
this fan header up here because that just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, and then you got some wiring up here that you could probably clean up too. Maybe tuck that away if you can. Um, you can tuck wiring underneath like and behind sometimes up and behind screws depending on how tight the block is to the board uh, just to kind of get it out of the way. I'm curious what kind of performance you're getting out of uh, out of this kit with this board. Uh, I had a system with this board and this exact kit of memory and I couldn't run this any higher than uh, 2400 speed. So I don't know if there's been improvements to um, to uh, you know bi with BIOS revisions and whatnot to memory compatibility, but I was having a lot of problems, especially with a four channel kit in this board specifically. So I'm more uh, I'm wondering if you're getting the full um, full capabilities of this of this kit. I hope you are. Uh, over here, looks like we got a little bit of a, a kink in the tube. So, you know, there's a couple things about the way this tubing is run that I might change. I do like the, the fact that you're running clear. I think clear in this system looks great. You have the drain port, like, I, like I've been talking about the last couple systems. So, good job there. Uh, and this Singularity uh, Reservoir and uh, Ethereal Mounts are top notch. So, they, these are, this is great stuff. Uh, and you you did right there. This is the this is the this is a close up of the monoblock, I guess. Uh, but it looks like so you got these are Primo Chill fittings. These are Barrow fittings. Uh, I know you said you had a couple different fittings here. Let's see if I could spot anything else. That's that's a Singularity plug. So yeah, you got a couple mixed up, but they look they're all um, they're all nickel. So without looking without looking in and seeing like the. Or am I like these like the holes that indicate this is a primo chill fitting it look they look the same so there's no problem here with mismatch uh, there's no logos on the side or anything like that uh, so these these look nice these are these are like billet aluminum cable combs or something like that these look really good um, you know once again you got this this is a look from a view from the side I guess but this is the same header that I talked about before up here if I want to consider sleeving up and this is your setup this again looks really neat and clean. I like the boom arm tucked back behind there. Uh, so yeah, this looks great. Good job on this. Uh, so people send me their computers and I hope they don't mind that I am nitpicking because I assume that's kind of what they want me to do. But if you were to take this and look at it, this looks fantastic. I'm sure it looks amazing on your desk and I'm sure it took you a long time to do. Um, I hope you get the 1080 Ti in there because that should be in a system like this. Uh, and I hope that perhaps you can water cool it because that I think would look great. You might need to add another another radiator or something along those lines. But uh, but this looks really good. Get some cabling back behind here. That's kind of magnified by the uh, by the reservoir, which is interesting. You might try to try to find a different place for that to run or something like that. But this looks really good. Really good job. Really good job by everybody in this episode. I wanted to feature some water cooling builds. Maybe next time we won't feature any and we'll just do air cooling or AIOs or something along those lines but thank you so much everybody for sending in the pictures of your systems I kind of got flooded with emails uh, when I when I posted that I was gonna bring this series back so I'm glad people still have interest in it so once again if you guys are interested in sending me in your system to be featured on the channel uh, this email address right here is where you send all your information and photos the higher resolution photos the better photos the better chance you have of getting featured I can't feature everybody I get a lot of emails so I'm sorry if your rig was not featured perhaps it will be next time uh, but this is episode 5 and when we get to 10 we'll be giving away 100 bucks so send me in your systems thank you so much everybody for watching get subscribed to the channel if you're not already and see you next time